this very weird thing against couples being like my dad told me the night the night before like make sure you get up right and early and do the lawn or cut the grass and stuff and if i slept in the next day and i hear the lawnmower on and my brothers are next to me asleep we're in you trouble better put three pairs of shorts on <laughs> Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to the Jattle Tea Podcast. Welcome back. We are hitting you from Tuesday, Tuesday, January 23rd at 6 p.m. We are early today. We usually film the podcast like the day of the podcast, but today I don't know what's going into next. Like, like an hour before the podcast <laughs> has to go live. Literally. Yeah, it, it's pretty bad. But today I was like, OK, I have some free time today. The rest of the week is going to be super busy. So what you doing, man? Hello? Hello? Testing one, two, three. Are you adjusting the volumes? Yeah, stop. Okay, sorry guys. Technical difficult. Ow, babe, that was mine. Sorry. Can we talk again? There you go. Hello, hello. There we go. Oh my gosh, that gave me a headache. How was um last week's podcast audio? It was good. I don't know why all of a sudden mine like was lower. Or maybe we switched. Oh yeah, we probably did. Yeah, I didn't hear last podcast, so I didn't I didn't know how Oh, that. oh that. Oh yeah. So like right when we posted that podcast, everyone was like, "the the voices sound so crisp." So I guess, yes. I guess apparently these are better than the other ones that we had. Yes, I'm so happy, you guys. Me I too. didn't actually hear that podcast back, but I'm so glad that you guys love it. And I, what did they say about the background? Did they like it? Yeah, they like the background. They love the new background. Yes. Mm-hmm. Damn, we slayed the day. Nice. Period. Um, that, actually, that background video we ho- we filmed a whole video on that uh, on our couple's channel, Jadley. So stay tuned for that. That part will be uploaded up before already. already. Yeah. yeah, it's up. But anyway, um, welcome back, guys. Today is a new week. We are about to start a new month. Jacob is going into the new month sick as hell. Yes, I'm sick. I have like a million sinus infections. My head's on fire and I could barely breathe through my nose. Yeah, I noticed he was like, Jake never has boogers, right? Ever. Like there is always one person that always carries tissues in the car. And, and it's, it's not. Yeah. You guys know ever since I got my wisdom teeth pulled out, I got like permanent boogies, right? And so... I noticed he had some and I was like, oh, shit, not and normal. At first she was laughing because she's like, ah, karma, that's what you get. Mm-hmm. But then after a while, like the next day, I ended up feeling like I had a like a my head was literally on fire. Yeah, He slept all day. I was sweating and I was like, bro, what the heck? And I never get sick. I'm like the person that doesn't get sick in the family. Yeah, who never gets sick. And bam, it hit me like I a freaking you. bus. Took yep. you out. And it's crazy because like for Jake to be the one that's like taken out by a cold, it's usually severe because this man doesn't get taken out by nothing and you know what's crazy is that this happened yesterday and today he's already up and walking i would have been in bed i would have been cuddled up watching (laughs) netflix like this man's already up i don't know how that works i think since me and i have been together i've been sick it's probably like what my second time being sick probably second or third time ma'am yeah second or third time being sick and she takes care of me every time so i i really appreciate it oh you're welcome man. she made me food dude she made me some soup it was a the Hispanic like tomato soup. It, what's it called? Fideo or something? Fideo, yeah. Yeah, it was gas. The first day I was like, mmm. The second day I was like, mmm. Had I've it for had it for the first and second day. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't make you anything else. I was super busy today. No, 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 no. I don't care. It was bomb. You, you know what's a lot crazy? Too. Because I grew up eating fideo like all the time. It wasn't like a like a food that you would eat when it was just raining. Like it was like we would eat fideo like at least once or twice a week. By the way, if you don't know what fideo is, it's not fideo. It's just, it's a certain kind of soup, but you could use any noodles. My mom would rarely use fideo. It's like a hot tomato soup. It is delicious. Yes, with like some kind of like pasta and they have like different shapes and stuff. And usually my favorite was always the shells, but my mom's favorite was the elbows. So we would always eat the elbows. So I hate the elbows. What are the ones you used day? yesterday? I love those ones. Like, That's fideo. So oh. it's like little, um, like... If you get a spaghetti and you cut it like 20 times, it's like the little It's like a noodles. little little noodle this big. Yeah, it's really good. You literally just make it with tomato sauce and Garlic. chicken bouillon and mm. that's it. But it's really good. Anyway, so I grew up eating that, right? So I feel like now I don't want to eat that. Like I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it when I'm sick. Like I don't want to eat it at all. Because it's low-key like a struggle meal. I, it's very yeah, inexpensive to make. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think growing up, we would eat it as a struggle meal because it was really cheap. Like a, a can of tomatoes was well, like 20 cents. Yeah, it's And not the expensive. fideo packets or like the, any kind of noodle, you could get like fucking five for a dollar. Mm-hmm. Like it's really, really cheap. So I don't know. I don't, now I feel like I love, l- my favorite comfort food when I'm sick is pho. Isn't that, oh yeah. It's pho. Like if I'm feeling any kind of under the weather, I'm eating pho. If I'm craving anything, it's pho. If I'm literally just hungry one day and I'm like, oh, I want to go out to eat pho. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't like pho like that. I like other stuff that the restaurant we go to has, but not pho in general. Yeah, you're 
right it, it's it's crazy though because you really do overeat something like i feel like a lot of dishes now actually when like i come to my mom's house and she made a certain dish i'm like oh yum like i miss that but like certain things like the soup yeah that, i don't miss that's, it. that's true because like sometimes your mom makes some bomb food and i come over and i eat it and then the uh, your siblings are in the room like they don't want it yeah, or they're, they're making like, something hey. else I'm like, bro, how do you not want this? And I no, guess you I guys get had it, it yeah. your entire life or something. Yeah, I like, I just feel like we overate. I, I, we had the same meals every, like, every week. So, like, whatever we ate the week before that, like, if my mom made it, which I don't blame her. I make the same shit every day. Like, mm. I don't know how she even came up with a week's worth of recipes. Yeah, that's, that's wild. I have no clue. And it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Like making food is so expensive and it's crazy because you don't realize that till you actually start grocery shopping yourself. But it's so pricey. Like anything you want to make, it's anything with meat, good luck. Even like chicken and stuff, it's just so pricey. And it just everything in general, veggies, everything's so pricey. Eggs. I remember one time, like my mom, uh, we, we weren't really doing well at all. And my dad had just lost his job. He got hurt and he wasn't like on workers' compensation or anything at the time. And so, and my mom, I don't think my mom was work. She might've been working, but she was working like for the schools and they don't pay well. Like schools, mm. schools don't pay you well, especially if you're like a, a teacher. I mean, uh, what's it called? Um, what's that called? You're not the teacher, but you're the helper. Oh, like the assistants? assistant. Yeah. If you're the assistant and my mom bought like a whole bunch of chicken and it was for like the next two months. And it was a lot of chicken, like a whole bunch. And she would make it every single day. And I, like, since then I've never really liked chicken. And I, I feel like since COVID I started liking chicken just a little bit more, but cause that's I, all we know how to make. Yeah, but I, I kind of refrain, I refrain myself from chicken because she'll just bake it or she'll do like a whole bunch of stuff with it. But it just, the chicken, I, it just rem uh, reminds me of those days when we were like in that position in our life. And I was like, nah, I hate this. Because I feel like chicken was cheaper back then. Chicken was so cheap. Chicken's and she expensive now. My, my, uh, my mom wouldn't go to, uh, I mean, uh, wouldn't go to Target to get chicken either. She would probably, I don't know where she would go, but she'd go to like the, uh, where they had the deals, the best yeah, deals Yeah, you for could food. not go to uh, Target to get chicken. Bro, Target yeah, chicken seven is $7 for two chicken breasts. Oh yeah, it's so bad. And not even just that, but like you get not good quality chicken too. Like, I think the best place to buy chicken is probably like Costco. Oh, Sam's Costco's chicken isn't the best. Costco's, Costco's chicken is thick, bruh. Yeah, it's really good. And like, it's usually like 20 bucks, right? But you get six packs and each pack has like two to three chicken breasts. It's it's good. Mm -hmm. They have good, you know, and that six packs will feed an entire family like for a week. Yeah, if you got like your favorite home cooked meal, let us know what it is down below, and we would have to try it. Especially if it's not like Hispanic or American. Yes, if we it's would not love Hispanic to try it. specifically, because I feel like I've ate every Hispanic dish in the book, but I really want to try other like cultures' food. I feel like I'm. I don't know. I think when you just overeat everything, like it's funny because for Jake, like whenever he hears that my mom's making a certain kind of Mexican dish, he's so excited about <laughs> it. Right? Like it's good so too pumped because he didn't really like have too much of like. His Mexican dishes were different than mine. Yeah, like I had I had Mexican, authentic Mexican dishes once in a while because my grandma would make it, but I wouldn't go visit my grandma like every week. So yeah. it was rare. Like you had never had menudo before, huh? Yeah, I always had menudo. You, what was the thing that you didn't have? Was it barbacoa? But you never had barbacoa. I never, I've never had that. Uh -uh. Yeah, he had never had that before. I remember he tried it with me for the first time. I couldn't believe that he... Because remember how Jake catfished me and made me think that he was like Mexican, but he really... What you know? I get. I was. I am he Mexican, is, but like he made me think he spoke Spanish. It's because I was in my like, Mexican era, bro. I was being like a little taquache. It was during the era where being Mexican was cool. I remember that. Like everyone was like, Duh. I, think, I think that I think that's going on right now again. You think it's happening? Yeah, again? I think so. Yeah, I remember there was a whole era because I think it happened when I was like in sophomore year or like junior year, and becoming like being like super Mexican became like the biggest trend in the world, and everyone was trying to. I remember that. Anyway, I think it might still be happening, like, in high school. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how your high school was. My high school was, like, full of uh, all all races. Yeah, mine too. But it wasn't, like, the first years weren't, like, people were proud to, like, be listening to Spanish music. Really? Yeah, and then the set. I know we always have this conversation. And I'm like, bro, my high school was always, like, they weren't ever uh, just one, one race at a time. It was everything all at once. Like, the uh, Hispanic people would be with their guitars and stuff, like, jamming out. Dude, that didn't happen till becoming Mexican became a trend. Ever since I was a freshman, it, it, that happened. Really? I think everyone was like hearing the. What about the middle wave. school? Middle school, um, I I don't know. I wasn't really around. Uh, I was just playing soccer. To be honest, I wasn't trying to make friends. Middle school was like nothing. Like nothing. Nobody was. Oh yeah, there was a big drastic change from middle school to high school. Yes, like how right, everyone right. acted. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's when it made me change when we went into high school. I don't remember the timeline, but anyway, that whole era, whatever. So Jake made me think that he like spoke spanish and like 
was like an actual Hispanic, like real, real authentic Hispanic, like family like me. So my fucking surprise when he was like, oh, I've never ate all of these Mexican dishes. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, uh, and then I learned he didn't speak Spanish, whatever. Anyway, you guys know that if you've been like OG watchers. Yeah, yeah, I had to catfish that. If you don't know, I catfished that. I was speaking Spanish to her like on live. So, like, I have my own sayings in Spanish like that I know and I could recite them really well. And it seems like I could speak fluently in Spanish, but I really don't. In all reality, I don't really, I, I could barely speak Spanish and I I understand a little more. But yeah, I, I, I tricked that into falling in love with me by faking that Spanish character. I think it was like for me now, now, that I'm like older, I don't think it would have been a big, big, as big as a deal as it was when I was younger. Because before I thought like, oh, I could, is that rubbing up against? Yeah, the it mic? is. I am so sorry. Here, let me take it off. I I heard Ooh. something, but I didn't know if it was that or not. Yeah. Shit, I'm so sorry, guys. If you just heard my that. boy brought a big old puffer to the and podcast. Cold as fuck, right? Yeah, bro. Speaking about cold, when we were living here, we had no access to the AC, none. So if it was hot over there. It was cold over here. If it was cold over there, over here, it was hot over there. Dude, I'm tired of Jake's weak ass podcast stands. Nah, you could buy your own podcast stands, <gasps> but these ones were like four hundred dollars, and they were supposed to work good. Well, you got catfish, buddy. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it anymore. They're just leaving. You do every podcast. I'm it's, tired it's, of it. No, his come on, leave it, leave it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Damn, half stripped. Nice. My boy went halfway. Yeah, because I'm cold <laughs> on this. Well, I'm cold on both sides. But <laughs> what was I trying to fucking say before I got rudely interrupted by this stupid ass mic? Um, I don't remember what you're saying. You were on the lines of. Got it. Dishes. So no, it would have been a bigger of a deal before mm. because I thought that I couldn't be with someone who wasn't, um, like Hispanic because of my parents and all X, Y, and Z, right? Which is like not something. Now I'm like, why would I ever, mm-hmm. why would I ever think that? You know, it was very silly because at the end of the day, the person you're dating is you and not your family. Yeah. But I remember back then. So when I found out that like when I thought he was Hispanic, I was like, ooh, perfect. Perfect. I was like, because before I was like, I'm not going to date anyone who's not Hispanic. So yeah, I don't think it, if you wouldn't have like told me that lie, I don't think it would have worked. I think it would have because I'm a really nice person and like deep down and I think I would have like gotten you one way or another. You think so? Yeah, I think. You think you got game, but you don't. I do got game. <laughs> Bro, I was smooth. I still am, but, you know. You were more. I was more smooth? Yeah. I feel like I'm more smooth right now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> it was, like, annoying before. Yeah, I was a little immature. I would, I would just, like, bleep out random stuff, try to try to be funny, but not no more. Yeah, you've, like, grown a lot, and it's, it's crazy. Thanks. I think it was also because of your um friend group. Maybe. Because I- that's how you pick up a lot. Because for me, like, I feel like I would act like my friend group a lot. And then, like, ever since, like, you know, we got out of high school and stuff, like, like that's so dumb. Why would I ever do that? Mm-hmm. Like, you just pick up things. Whoever you hang out with is, like, who you are. I don't care. You had, but says. you had a couple friend groups, huh? Mm-hmm. I only had one. I think or it was just one main friend group. Which you still are friends with them. <laughs> they're funny. I was just with and them And they're at, all this still the same. <laughs> they're hilarious, dude. I love that you guys say friends. Yeah. I love that because, like. You truly have a friend group that you are like still really, really close with. And whenever you go to Bakersfield, it's like you guys all meet up. Well, I feel like, it, we're, like not, party we're not girls. Like, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but honestly, girls are like, they're different than guys. Girls are always, always like, there could be more envy towards uh, with females than the, I guess there could be with males. You know, I think it is that. I think it comes down to envy. I didn't understand why girls are that way but even when i think about it, i'm like oh my god i used to be so i feel like there's more my friends i too. feel like there's more things to uh, be envious about of a girl than there is a guy like a guy if, ha- if he has a big butt i'm not gonna be jealous of a guy that has a big butt rather than if i was a girl and she had a big butt i'm like why is my man staring at this girl with a big butt I and agree. then you just create these thoughts and thoughts and you like generate that envious yeah yes. and i also well it obviously is a root of insecurity and stuff but yeah i agree i think with girls there's obviously a lot more and uh, by the way i'm not saying this like oh you know that's why i'm only friends with guys i can't believe i ever said that in my entire life this is the dumbest shit i've like ever thought about and now whenever i hear a girl say that i'm like oh my god i never want to be friends with you like you're only friends with guys yes i, I understand it to an extent but i feel like if you're only friends with guys uh it, it kind of has like a bad look not that okay so i used to be like that Right, be like, oh no, because guys have no drama. That's first of all, that's like I think something to cover up the real issue. Okay, actually, it's a good thing to talk about. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Okay, I think that girls who say that, who are like, oh, I only have guy friends because they're no drama. Right? Mm-hmm. It's almost it's questionable because I wouldn't say that every girl is drama. I think that girls just don't like to hear the truth. You're right. You know, like. 
I feel like most, what is drama? Well, and there's also bad girls, which mm-hmm. I totally understand with, but that's why you break up, you know, with your friendships and then you move on to new friends. But drama, I feel like is just a, like a very broad word. Like what is the drama starting from, right? Did someone tell you something you didn't like, you know, and maybe that's why you think that they're dramatic or that they do drama because they said something you didn't like, or it's just like a big, a big question mark when people say that now. And to me, I feel like I see it as a red flag in, in girls because it's like, no, as a girl, you should want to hang out. Like, I refuse to hang out with Jake when it's all guys. I refuse because it's, like, not the same as there being another girl there. Like, as girls, like, you unite, you know? And yeah. you, like, uplift each other. And and I feel like my friends do a good job of making you feel like you're one of the boys instead of, like, making you feel like you're the girl in the group. Yeah, you're, yeah. It, it, I totally agree, right? And I, your friends are really cool, and, you know, I'm close to all of them. But I feel like... Unless there's like, I need there to be a girl there. And that's why whenever I go to like over there, like I'm so happy that G is there because I just immediately like get in sync with G Mm -hmm. because it's like that feminine energy. So now as I'm older, right. And I completely grew out of the whole, like being a boy's girl and like just feeding off of the male attention. It's like, no, you want to have girlfriends. Like you want to go out and do girl things, like get coffee, get matcha, like, you know, get our nails and get our hair done. Like, that's just something that I crave so much. And I feel like when I was younger, I didn't crave that because I was just... You're fiending for the boys' attention. I was just fiending for male attention. That's what it comes down to. You fiend for male attention and, like, it's just not a happy way of living. I think a lot of high school girls right now uh, are doing that. Instead of going going out and being a girly girl, you guys are, like, going out and trying to get a a guy's attention. Like, it's not... You're not living your your life the way that we would have lived our lives. As a girl, yeah. I say. I wish, like, actually, I, I don't regret anything about my life, right? Because I think everything had to happen the way that it had to happen for me to be here. But I'm like, I really, but it just wouldn't have aligned. Like, I think the fact that my parents were so strict never allowed me to be a girl's girl anyway. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, I couldn't so I, I feel like there's, there's also different situations. So, like, yeah. the way I'm thinking about it is, like, you um, a nice preppy school. I feel like a nice preppy school where, like, the moms know each other and everything like that. The, those girls are going to be more of a girly girl than, like, a regular school where there's like the guys are just guys and the girls are just girls. Like nobody's really correlated with each other. I feel mm-hmm. like those, I feel like the, the people with the moms that are like right next, like best friends, moms, your neighbors and stuff, those girls are going to do girly stuff with their moms and yes. stuff. But like the regular schools, I feel like they're going to be like craving the guy's attention more. Yeah, I agree. And I also think that it's, it's a different standard. Like it's a different uh, like financial standard as well. Yeah. But I also think that like, like, for me now, it's really important that when I have kids that I encourage my kids to, like, do all of these things, right, that I didn't do. And, like, encourage them to go out and get their nails done with their friends. And I totally see the money thing that you're talking about because I feel like now seeing that, that's huge. But there's also other ways. Like, I just wanted to go to, like, the library with my friends. Like, little things like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, money. But at the same time, just, like, the actual idea of hanging out with your friends and stuff. But it all comes down to insecurity and craving male attention. So, if that is you right now, please just give it a second thought. Girls are Ta- awesome. For real. Like, drop the vape. Drop the boys. Oh, just my gosh. chill. Oh my gosh, that's a whole, that's a whole, I'm so grateful that I never started vaping. Do you guys vape? And why? What, if you do vape, what's your reasoning? Like, I have a very, I feel like addictive personality. So I'm very grateful that I haven't tried it. All right, we're back. Sorry, our dog threw up. I guess she has an upset stomach. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, poor baby. But what I was originally saying, okay, so my brother vapes, right? And it's very ugly. I think, I think if you vape, you one of two things. One of one things, you're there's no gain from it. It's like if you have a if you have a Benjamin, I get you're getting like that the adrenaline, you're getting the the you're on cloud nine, all right. But a vape is totally different because all it does is just damage your body. You don't get a feeling from it. I guess some people say that they get a feeling from like the that part, but but what do you really gain? And I was telling him, I was telling him like, bro, when you when you exhale that that smoke, it smells like your breath. And he was like. Curious about it. He's like, oh, no way. Does Good. it actually? Tell him yeah. that. So he gets insecure about it. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I was like, it smells like your breath. It's nasty. And he's like, damn, hold up. And then he goes to get a gum. And I'm like, fuck. This is going to do everything he can to keep vaping. So except, Yeah, except drop the vape. And it's so and sad. I told him, I'm like, bro, you're addicted to it. And he's like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if you're not addicted, throw it away right now. And he's like, I'll do it. And then I was trying to make make him do it. And then he didn't. He never did it. So I think he is. 
sadly. It happened so fast. And Y'all, that- go tell him. Tell tell my little brother, Joel, to stop vaping. Yeah, I don't know what I would do if Nelly, if I found out Nelly was vaping. Because it's like, it happens so fast that someone gets addicted to it. And like, it's a highly addictive thing, you know? And for someone with an addictive personality, like, that's tough. Even for people that I think don't have addictive personalities, like, I think, isn't that, like, I'm pretty sure it's just a highly addictive thing where people can't stop. Do you think addictive personalities are genetics or no? Yes. I really? think it's proven that it that it is genetic. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's hard because it's like once you try it and if you like it, it you know, that, that's it. From there, it just goes downhill. Yeah. And it's hard because, like, you obviously don't want to make somebody – like, you could sit there and be like, you're dumb as fuck, right? That's or, what I tell him. That's what I tell him. You know, or, but is that going to work, you know? Or you could sit there and be like, you don't need this. But I also don't think that's going to work. I just think that people, like, once you get into, like, once you get started with it, I don't know how to get somebody out of that. Because mm-hmm. I see my friends go down the rabbit hole of that. And they st- and it's always, you want to know what people say? What? Oh, it's just a habit to do it. <laughs> to that's just, always. To justify you know what that's it? called? That's addiction. called addiction. <laughs> like it's it, it's crazy because it starts off as yeah, oh yeah, just like it's just a habit, like it's just satisfying to do or whatever. And, and I, I feel like stop. I feel like addiction has prevented me from doing a lot of things, especially like um I guess in the drug world because I was always scared to try something and like like it. Yeah, me too. You were always scared to try okay, yeah. I never wanted to try anything crazy because what if I liked it and what if I went down this loophole of trying this thing and then it opens up doors to this thing, like it's like a gateway drug and I don't know. I'd rather not yeah, and I, I think I've seen also, like, you know how when I was younger, I had my, um, so he's, what is it? That's your god godfather? Yeah. Yeah. He took us to L.A. when we were younger, and he took us to, like, the streets. Ooh. And I remember he showed us, and he was like, this is what drugs do to you. Like, Dang. these people, like, they're out here just, like, they don't, they, they don't have any other way out because, and they want out, but they don't have another way out, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and like I remember seeing that, and I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't want to live like this, you know? And I, you know it's crazy? Like, Red Ribbon Week and all that stuff in in school. Dude, I remember, like, Dare, no, no, not Dare, uh, like, Say No or something. What was it? Uh, like, the Say No to Drugs thing? Say No to Drugs. Yeah, it's crazy because when you're young, like, you're just like, oh, yeah, like, Say No Bro, to Drugs, Bro, I right? can cancel all you little elementary kids. Y'all promised to never do drugs. And yeah. I see you guys smoking weed every weekend. Babe, <laughs> and like smoking weed is like the uh, least of it. No, I know, I know. But the I see y'all. Uh, I'm canceling all you guys, all right? It's crazy. I have all your pictures from elementary saying, I promise not to do drugs. I say no to drugs. And look at you. Gotcha at 4K. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. Like you had your picture on there and I said no. <laughs> it's crazy because like so young, they train you to like obviously not, not do this, not want this. And then it changes like it's like a literal like I wonder sixty. I wonder who makes it a norm in like junior high and elementary. Just I mean junior high and uh, high school to start doing it though. I remember it was always the cool kids. Really, the cool kids started, and then it became like a domino effect, dude. Like it started with literally just the cool kids, right? Who had access to like money, and they would just were never fucking home. They were always out. I mean, you don't even have to have access to money. It's not that hard to grab something from the uh, uh, what's called a gas station or the liquor store. Oh well. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I didn't have the spare change to get a fucking anything. So it just, it, <laughs> you know, like even if... It worked out in your favor. It worked out in my favor. But, you know, the people who had the money and then the people who were always out, you know, the people that would be at the park and stuff, like skateboarding? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how it started. And then it just trickled down, dude. It was like literally like fire. It spread so fast. And then, yeah, by the time we were like in freshman year, everyone everyone was like super addicted to like something would you consider yourself with addictive behavior yeah 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 i do and that's why i cannot cannot even like try it i think like the one thing that saves me from like being addicted to alcohol is the fact that like the taste is just shit and i hate the way it makes me feel thankfully yeah, yeah i don't think drugs have a bad taste or anything it's just like a feeling after a while rather than you have you have a like what a crazy night out with beer or alcohol, and then the next day you feel like shit. Yeah, like it's like not there's something a, there's, I want to do. There's the consequences for having it yes, rather correct, than yeah. for drugs. Maybe and there's also not really like consequences. During, like when you, there's a period, okay, when you're like drunk, right? And it's like the time where like you're having a fun time, but you still have control of what you do and what you don't do, right? It's like a, it's like you're drunk, but you're you're not to the point where like you're so drunk to where you don't, have control of your body does that make sense yeah you know there's like that middle point and that point is fine because like 
you're having fun, but I know exactly what's going on around me. I know exactly what I need to do. Like you're very aware, you know, Mm -hmm. my dad's calling me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But then after that is where you hit the point where you no longer have control of your body. Your mind is spinning so hard that you don't even know what's going on around you. And that that's where it's like, I don't I don't like that feeling. And I just refuse, refuse to feel that way every day. Yeah, I don't think I have addictive behavior or anything because there's not been a specific thing that I've been like tied to. But I could say that for you, it is coffee for sure caffeine not just that but like caffeine yeah caffeine, look at, look at your like hand. sweets like i have a very addictive personality okay we're back again for the little second time that's like <laughs> the second or third time dang All right, I, anyway. I, I lost what we were th- uh, talking about too I so we're, we're just th- talking about addictive personalities and um not doing any substances because then we get addicted correct and how they're all bad and just do things in moderation is that what we're talking about yeah, yeah we're doing that um yeah and i It's just, I think that's just a tough subject just because like a lot of people, I feel like half the world is addicted. And when you're on that side of the spectrum, you don't like to hear anyone be against that side. And and it also goes back to the drama thing. Like, is it drama because you don't like what someone said or, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a tough thing. And I'm very grateful for, you know, now that my siblings and even I, we aren't addicted to it but i don't know how i would handle it if someone did because how do i get them out of that you know Mm -hmm. and like i don't know it's tough even and not even just like the smoking the baby and like even with drinking like thankfully none of us are like addicted to doing that and we only do it like in moderation and like when there's like an event but we don't even if you're doing it just like every weekend that's different than like being drunk like every day like that's more of an addictive thing Mm. it's just tough yeah, I think being drunk every day, there's something wrong with you. You're probably healing yourself, like uh, you would say, but it's just damaging you overall. I think my dad, my dad was drunk. I don't know if he was drunk every day, but he would drink every day, and then he ended up getting getting a liver cirrhosis. Like that's what he has now. So a lot of people do. A yeah, lot he's not of supposed to be do. drinking, but he drinks like pretty often still, and he knows he knows he's not supposed to be drinking, but oh, he'll it not only beat takes the time. shit out of my dad if he did that. Thankfully, I feel like my dad is very um. You know, like it only takes time for for him to understand it, and it's just sad mm-hmm. though. Yeah, at the end, when you've just been doing something your whole life, like breaking that, like if someone told me right at like my when I'm like fifty, like you can't drink coffee anymore, that'd be so hard for me to. Yeah, stop. that's what I'm saying. Like back to like those personalities where you can't leave something. Like I don't know if I would be able to leave it. Really? I so I don't blame him. You couldn't drop it like at a, like at, just at once. Drop I don't know. It. I'm not fifty yet, but I don't. Right now, no. Nah. What? Yeah, I think Nat has a super bad like caffeine addiction. Like, I think it's all mental at the same time too. Like, if she doesn't drink her drink and it doesn't, uh, or she drinks a drink and it has caffeine and she knows that it has caffeine, then she'll be like, "Yeah, I'm good." But if she doesn't know if it has no, caffeine, babe, she do can't you know feel about it. Caffeine headaches. What are caffeine headaches? When you get a headache because you don't have caffeine. Yeah. Oh, that's an addiction problem right there. Yeah, it is. Your body's addicted. Mm-hmm. I, that's why, like, people that go through withdrawals and stuff, like, they need to go to the hospital. Because your body gets so addicted to a certain something that it's like. I it. think I think you should take a like a, a month off of caffeine. I did when I got when? to ACL. No, you still had your coffee. Th- no, didn't I you? didn't, babe. Really? Because I couldn't have any kind. Co- yeah, no, what? I did. I had coffee for like a month and a half. Ding. I can stop, but I think I'd go back. <laughs> <laughs> so there's what's the point? I I don't know. It's just also like I think because I know caffeine isn't like so bad i think that's I what uh, that's what, that's what addic- addicted people say yeah you're right but like for example i i'm not addicted to like energy drinks like i know this is like gonna kill me you know what i mean so i do it in very i wouldn't say you, you're not addicted to them but you have them more than i do now energy drinks mm-hmm. jake when do i have energy drinks you had one i think two days da- three days ago okay which f- energy drink no like five days it? ago actually Wh- what energy drink it was the same it? one what are you a purple about? one when remember you're like oh wait is this the last one you remember? Oh, yeah, but it was like 9 p.m. and I had to pack for a trip. I had to leave at 4 a.m. That's different. Like, I don't just go and pick up an energy drink midday. Like, let me crack this real quick. I don't do that, you know? Or like, and even if I do open this energy drink, I'll probably drink about like this much of it. Tops. I used to be addicted. I, I don't you know about were, addicted. Yeah. I don't know about addicted, but it was just a feeling like I would correlate doing a podcast with an energy drink. And I was like, oh, my favorite part of the day. But now I don't I don't have any more coffee. Mm. 
I get you. Which I'm not saying it's any better. Honestly, I think that the worst part about coffee is not the caffeine. I think it's about all the sugar you put in it. And the price tag. Well, Coffee. not for me. Coffee's expensive. Not for me. I make it at home now. You're right. Period. See, we're cutting down. That's <laughs> an addiction. You know what I am addicted to? What? Spending money. <laughs> that's what I'm addicted to. That's that's my dirty pleasure. It, boy, it's because you don't spend money on like trash things. You actually buy cool things, cool stuff. Everything that I spend money on, I make money off of it. But that doesn't that doesn't excuse it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I think I for sure could be better about it, but it's just like it's it makes me happy. That's what an addict says, but it just makes me <laughs> happy, you know? Like yeah. I know for a lot of people their happiness is like going and um like I don't know, going to play soccer like Nelly or their happiness is like um I don't know, like driving their car or whatever, right? Whatever your happiness is, going out with your friends. My happiness is shopping. <laughs> I am addicted to shopping and it really sucks because I suffer the expensive price tag of it, but it makes me happy and do that's all that matters. Do you see yourself shopping more for you or more for your dogs? More for me. <laughs> right now? Right now. I feel like during the during like the festive seasons you shop more for the girls, Agree. but but for right now it is you. I don't care who I'm shopping for. I just want to shop. Like <laughs> I just want to see something, like it and say, "I could buy this." See, I just feel like it's an ego thing because I don't know. I see something and I'm like, you know what? I work for this, so I'm going to take it home with me. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to have it as an ego thing because you can also be like, when you see something you don't, uh, you can't get yet, then you're like, I'm going to push myself to get this. And Dude, then it, it goes to a different me. level. It goes to a different level and a different level. I can't sleep. Mm-hmm. I can't sleep at night knowing that I cannot afford a G-Wagon. You know how <laughs> much it bugs me? You, It's crazy because I like, how, I like the way you think because in all honesty, you can buy a G-Wagon right now. But... You choose not to because you want to get to a certain level where you're like, okay, I could I could buy a G-Wagon now. Like, I need to be able to say, I can buy this G-Wagon right now, and it's not going to make a difference. Like, I'm not even going to see the money leave my account. I, and I, for the, uh, I think there was a TikTok that I seen. It was like uh, two types of people on the internet. There's the influencers that have the G-Wagon, and then there's the, the real owners, or like the other people that, that own the G-Wagon that don't really flex it. Yeah. And I think that uh, he was talking about like the influencer makes enough money to uh to pay the G wagon, and then the other guy just like it's, it doesn't dent the bank account. Yeah, and exactly. there's those two types of people. And it's hard because it's like I don't want to be driving my G wagon and parking it in my little town home. Like I want to drive my G wagon and park it in my beautiful private rich house. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Like there's no point in me having this like three hundred thousand dollar car if I don't have the lifestyle like. How do I explain this in the perfect way? Like, if I have to, you know, really think about, like, damn, all this money is going to a car, then I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Like, I need to be at a point where I'm like, 300K? (laughs) I can make that in, like, like not a year, like, in a month, right? Uh That's how it has to be. If not, it's just not. It's not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I refuse to do it. Because I just feel like, then you put yourself in a, like, who's the G-Wagon really for? Is it for me or is it for everybody else? Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like a lot of people struggle with that. They buy stuff for, for them. They say it's for them, but they are really showing it off more than, like, it is for them. Exactly. And I never want to get to that point. Like, if I buy something, it's because I can afford this a million times and I want it. Pretty much. And like, I, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't ever see you showing off anything that you own, really. I don't think I do. I like maybe don't. maybe you were doing like your girly posts and putting your nails next to like your steering wheel or anything. But, but I just think that's so aesthetic. Like exactly. That's not the, that's not flexing. And like not just that, but I feel like there's also how do I explain like your this? OOTDs are super aesthetic and I like those. I love posting those fucking videos. But it's like I love when I would post like my little things like next to my pretty Mercedes steering wheel and it mm-hmm. wasn't to flex. It's not that, but it's like, it's just like, I'm just a girl post, you know, <laughs> you're in your just a girl era right now. Like I just love it. I love it. But I don't know. I think money's like a whole, a whole thing. And I never want to like, for example, I never got a luxury car until I was able to afford the luxury car. I wanted. Like uh-huh. I've been wanting a luxury car for so long. You guys like, you don't understand. Like I literally wanted it so bad. And for, I didn't even know about like Mercedes BMW, like all these luxury brands up until maybe like a year and a half, two years ago. 
Like two years ago. Like you knew the brand, but you didn't know the extent of what they have. Yeah, I didn't know because I didn't. I never wanted to look because I know me. And I know that if I saw it, I was going to make it my entire life mission to get one of these cars. So I never did, right? And then I ended up getting my blazer and that was like huge for me. And then I was, and then I found the GLE, right? And I was like, wow. I remember seeing that fucking car at Jake's old apartment. And I was like, this is a spaceship. It wasn't a GLE. You saw the- It was, babe. It wasn't the Beamer. You saw, she's seen an X7 or no, an X6. And she always thinks it's a GLE. Cap. They don't look the same. Cap. It was a, it was a Beamer. It was a coupe. All right, we'll have this argument for the rest Oh, of sorry. I think it might have been a coupe then. It was a coupe. Yeah, and the- then we later saw the BMW version. We're like, wait, that was cool too, remember? Mm-hmm. Anyway, I saw a coupe and I remember seeing it and I remember telling Jake like, that's a spaceship. I want it. It just gave me like, it looked like a spaceship to me. I don't know why. Remember? And ever since I was like, I'm going to get the spaceship. I'm going to get the spaceship. And it just got in my brain. And when did you have that apartment? In 2020? 2020. So two no, no, years? No, 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 2021. 21? Mm-hmm. And we're in 24? Yeah. So how long is that? Three like years? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Whatever. And I remember being like, I'm going to get this car. I'm going to get this car. I'm going to get this car. But I didn't really like look that much into it because I, I wanted to like, no, I wanted the car, but I didn't want to know too much because I know me. Right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, one day I ended up searching it up and I saw that it was like 100K and I was like, fuck. 100K for a car? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, I'm not paying that. And this was back when I was still like, I You're just, in I your grinding era still. Yeah, I couldn't afford it. Like at that point, I could not afford that car. I mean, I could, but I couldn't. You know, I wasn't going to do that to myself. You weren't going to be the influencer. Person. I wasn't going to be the influencer. So I was like, I'm not doing this. And then I found out that there was, the, I, I found out the difference between the 53s and the 63s, right? And then I got to the point where I could afford the 53, but I couldn't afford the 63. And I'm like, not doing it until I can afford the 60. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I don't just want to get this car, you know, get this car because I can only afford this one. And now I'm just going to get it. I'm just going to rush and get it. No, I'm going to save more. I'm going to grind more and I'm going to get the highest trim of the car because if there is a trim higher than my car, I cannot, I won't be able to She'll sleep She'll beat herself night. up over it. Because it's like, I no, work harder and get the bigger, like it's just a mental battle within myself, you know? And I, I was like, I'm not getting it. So then I went another, I think I went another year saving up. Dude, everybody and their mom is calling me today. Um, <laughs> I went another year saving up and I was like, I'm going to save more. I'm going to save more. And I was able to afford the 63. And that's when I went and I got my car because I was like, I'm going to get the best and what I want, but I'm going to wait and I'm not going to rush into it. And I'm so happy you didn't get the coupe because the coupe's so ugly. I think the back of it's like hideous. Yeah, I didn't end up getting with the car that I had said, the spaceship. I got the full size SUV. And it's so much more spacious, by the way. Yeah. compared Compared to the coupe. Yeah, I don't. Coupes now to me, they're really cute, but they're just like. They're for like a, t- not a teenage girl. I'm not going to say that because people are like, teenage girl. No, they're like for somebody who doesn't have babies, you know? And I have two babies, so it's hard. They're big. Mm-hmm. They the dogs do not fit in the coop. Like, they would scream at me, you know? They're bougie. <laughs> so I just can't do it. And also, like, the coop can't upkeep my shopping sprees. It just can't. Can't, But the truck can. The truck? Yeah. What truck? My truck. I thought you were going to say the G-Wagon. I was like, I know. Oh, no, nah, the G-Wagon can't. The, Fuck no, the G-Wagon that, could that's not. That's a robbery, dude. You're paying dude, so much oh money for no gosh. space. I know. It's honestly just like a. You're paying for the weight. It's a tier that you're just, for me, it's just like a little check check mark. Like, when I get a G-Wagon, I have made it, you know? Yeah. Like, it's kind of like a mental thing. And it's really good. I feel like a lot of people are like, you're never going to be happy. But for me, it's like, no, I'm always, I always have something to work towards. And I always have something like. For which I get up in the morning because I'm like, no, I, I, I don't have a G-Wagon yet. So what am I doing asleep? You know, <laughs> it's like a very big, it's a mental thing, I think. Do you really want a G-Wagon or no? They're cute. I, lo- I love the look of it. Very like mom, you know? I don't like them. But, but hear me out. I have to be at a point where I have like the fuck you money for it, where it's like, I'll have the G-Wagon, but I need I need another car. Oh, like it's not your first choice. No, it's not, not my right first now. choice. It's like on the on the checkbox, uh, the check spo- checkbox list, but it's not like up there on because top. Because you know what it is? I want a G-Wagon because it's a G-Wagon. Not because, mm. like, because you can't just have a G-Wagon and just have a G-Wagon. That sounds like a bunch of bullshit. It's because it's a small car. Like, it's tall, but if you've ever been inside of a G-Wagon, the back seats are tiny. And, like, the trunk, you have, like... Yeah, you don't have any room. They tell you to go fuck yourself, basically. <laughs> so you need, like, another car, you know? But it's like, if you're... Right now, I'm at the point where it's like, if I get a G-Wagon, I cannot have any other car. And that's how you know you can't afford a G-Wagon. Mm-hmm. So you, when I get a G-Wagon, I need to be able to have money to get a G-Wagon and whatever other car, you know? Which I don't think I have another car that I want. As of right now, don't let me see anything. Actually, I think I know what car you'd like. If, oh, uh, you'd like a Range. 
I, think I would like love a Range Rover. Uh-huh. That's What's also out of my budget, though. Not in that tax budget Wait, wait Ranges are more expensive than Benz's? Well, it depends. Like, I could get a Sport, and those are, like... But is that the top of the line? No, okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to get it. Oh, because there's, like, autopilot, huh? Or auto- autobiography. Yeah, that and one. And all kinds of, like, seven-seater boats and just, like, all <laughs> kinds of stuff, honestly. I feel like Range Rover messed up by, by their bougie cars because the front end looks like a 2015, 2016 Range Rover. I know, Range Rover, can you please, like, redesign your cars or something? Dude. They all look, like, the same, to be honest. But I think it's more about like a mystery, like what Range Rover is that? You'll or never Porsche know. too, like Porsche SUVs. Oh heck, nah, not like some, but I, like I don't the think I don't think they're cute at all. I I wouldn't get it. It's not my first choice. But the, you think you would you like it? It looks like a car from the movie Cars. It's like a little <laughs> toy, you know. Yeah, it does. It, the front end looks old. I don't know. I, I feel like I Mercedes and uh, BMW are really doing well. I'm like, I'm a Mercedes girl through and through. You remind, me of, the de- you remind me of a Mercedes girl. Yeah. yeah. It's just so feminine. Like, a Mercedes just reminds me of, like, a cute, like, really pretty put together girl. Like, just a girl. Like, it's just such a girl car to me, you know? And I feel like BMWs are so masculine, in my opinion. And... I love girls that are driving BMWs like, you know, they're bad bitches, but they have more masculine like boss girl energy. I feel like for me, like Mercedes is so like just like a girl car. Like, I just love it. You know, <laughs> I Mercedes is sponsor me. They need to sponsor you. But yeah, that's that's my vibe. That's my vibe for right now. I'm just trying to um, become rich and get a G-Wagon one day when I get a G-Wagon. <laughs> no, I'm rich. When I get a G-Wagon, nobody talk to me. Have you seen that? Um. TikTok where it's Drake like, I hate the the tweeters and the leaders. What is that? What? I've never heard yeah, of that one. Yeah, where it's like, you guys make me sick to my stomach, fam. Uh-uh. You haven't no, seen never, it? Uh-uh. Okay, so Drake goes on a live or something, and he goes like, uh, something like, oh, you know what makes me mad or something like that? And he goes like, the the, the tweeters and the leaders, the <laughs> something, 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 y'all make me sick to my stomach, fam. And then <laughs> this girl made a TikTok where it's like, me when I get my pink G-Wagon or something like that. And it's hilarious because <laughs> it's so real. <laughs> it's hilarious basically you know yeah i get you yeah i don't know i just thought that shit was so funny i'm like i'm gonna make this like when i get a g-wagon maybe i never get a g-wagon no i will get a g-wagon i think you're gonna grow up and not want the g-wagon i think when i can afford a g-wagon you're I'm not gonna, gonna want I'm it i'm not gonna want it you're gonna want something higher than the g-wagon i think that's gonna want like a you're gonna want like a bentley or you're gonna want like a rolls i fucking hate rolls royce they look ugly mm, i don't think so i think so I see a Rolls Royce on the street. Looks like it looks like a like a two thousand Honda. What about a Bentley? I don't think I've ever seen a Bentley in my Bentley's life. Bentley's a cooler. I want a Bugatti. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. A Bugatti. <laughs> that shit's so funny. No, you know what other car I really like? Which car? I love the Urus from the uh, outside. Okay. You okay. put me inside of a Urus, and I'm gonna say, "What is this? This is that? It's like." It's literally an Audi. Yeah, it is. They're the same. They're, they're the same, same car. Yeah. An you know, Audi Q8, same shit. I think Lamborghini bought Audi or Audi. No, I think Audi bought Lamborghini or something like that. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's one of those. So right they're now. they're pretty much the same thing. Oh. Like the S, the RS Q8 is, a, is the same thing as the Urus. But see, see, oh my gosh, here's another example. A Urus is the equivalent of like the masculine energy of a BMW versus the G-Wagon is more of like the girly car. You think a G-Wagon is girly? Oh, hell really? yeah. You only see bad bitches in G-Wagons. I see Or old, a guy who wants to be a girl so bad. I see old businessmen in G-Wagons. Like today, I seen an old guy in a G-Wagon. They want to be a girl so bad. <laughs> like instead of driving a Urus, you're driving a G-Wagon. As a man, <laughs> wild. Dude, I'm so, I'm so sorry if you're a man with the G-Wagon. I'm just speaking out of my ass right now. I'm it's because we, we don't have one. That's why. We don't, we're, we're hating just, right now. We're, we're hating. We're just like the, the lower tax bracket of you guys. And we're just talking shit. Trying to get our way up to we're you. We're trying to be you. That's all it is. It's just hate. That's all it is. Anyone who hates is jealous, and I'm very much jealous of you. Back to the envious problems of us. Yeah. Honestly, I'm a hater. But I think that pushes you. Because you're like, Yeah, oh, I'll never I don't tell ha- anyone that. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I, don't, I don't think you're a hater to a person, but you're a hater of yourself. You're like, why well, don't I have that yet? It and makes it- me so mad. <laughs> it makes me, and it's so bad because, like, that's obviously not positive reinforcement to yourself. But, like, it just, like, if there is more out there, we need to have it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like so frustrating. <sighs> Maybe we do have problems. I think we're we're addicted to having stuff we don't have. I mean, addicted to wanting stuff we don't have. I think that's everyone. <laughs> Maybe not. Nah, there's but some people me, that it are. just comes to money. <laughs> because I'm not a, like addicted to 
anything else. It's just addicted to having a good life. Ah, I like that. Are you addicted to your relationship with me? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I you just think? Kidding. No, I am. I think because I have a rare, very strong foundation, like I have a very like loving uh, circle. It's just that the only thing I'm fighting for is like peace and money. You know? Do you think, you know how the, in relationships there's like, uh, there's like a trend, I guess, on Twitter, I mean, on the social media that the guy has to do everything for the girl, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's. Agree. Okay, say a guy buys you 100 flowers mm-hmm. and everyone in the in the comments is like, um, that's the standards. Or like, I wish I had that. I wish I had that. But they're saying that it's like the standards for guys. You get me? <clears throat> Like the bare minimum, actually. Do you think 100 roses for a girl is the bare minimum or no? I think it depends. Here's my take on that. We've had this conversation offline, right? And we've had it because I think I posted some. Oh, here's what it comes from. I think I whenever like Jake does some sh- silly stuff, like I always post it on the internet because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> and I asked him to clean the kitchen one time. Not one time. Happens all the time. I think he posted multiple pictures of this. And where where he literally grabs the stuff and, like, puts it towards the counter and calls it a day. Yeah, I'm not the best cleaner. Anyway, there was this one time where he particularly got my matcha stick, like, put it in a candle. And then he, like, grabbed uh, a lighter and put it on top of my coffee machine. (laughs) I don't even remember this. random shit, right? When I was like, (laughs) this one caught me by surprise. Anyway, I posted it. And a lot of girls were like, at least he did it. And oh, shoot. that to me shows me that you do not value yourself at all. Damn. At all. Because like, what do you mean? At least he did it. We're talking about a man getting a matcha stick and instead of putting it in the cabinet, put it on a candle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not like. It's just a weird thing that as a girl, it's like excusing behavior. Like. It's just giving. Well, well, at least he tried. It's okay. Like, no, it's not okay. Do it right. What do you mean it's okay? I've just not, like, little things like that just show you let somebody know that they don't have to try their hardest. To be with you. Not to be with you, just in general, in life. You know what I mean? Like, if I do something that is wrong, right? At least, and someone tells me, at least you tried. No. I should have done it right. Like, there's not. I just think that for guys, there's a lot of excusing behavior. What so about, much excusing okay, behavior. Okay, what about for girls? What's the girl's bare minimum? Like, for what a does a Yeah, for a guy. What does a guy have to, like, have stuff accounted for for a woman to have? I think that as a girl, like, you have a big responsibility as well as to make sure that you do your part in making this relationship balance. And I feel like it's not about, like, roles or anything because we were literally just talking about you cleaning, you know? So I don't think that it has anything to do with that. But like as a significant other, right, if you are doing X, Y, and Z for me, it is my job to do the the missing pieces of that. Yeah, the ABCs. Yeah, to, to, to bring us together and to make sure that we're both working and both, you know, going towards our goal. And I do think that a lot of times like, but the thing is social media is really toxic. Like I have seen this girl post this um, TikTok where she was like talking about how like, oh, they got, they started dating. It's like one of my, it's one of my friends. I follow her on Instagram, but she posted how she was like they started talking at 14 got married at i don't know what age and then having a kid at 21 or something like that uh-huh. or 24 or something. and the comments were just like y'all didn't even give life a chance just being so rude and just like not being nice at all so i think people on the internet just have this very weird thing against couples being like functional relationships it's so odd to me I think it's because it's so normal on the internet to like be single and go have fun and stuff that when you post like a um, like you find your love life and you found the love of your life at a very young age that since you work out, they're like, I guess, ignorant to accepting that fact just because they haven't uh, found the love of their life at a young it's age. It's so rude. It's so rude. And it's just like. Because I guarantee you, whoever commented that stuff doesn't have a, a functioning relationship. Because well, if duh. they did, if they did, then they wouldn't be commentating yeah. it. They would be like, I'm so proud. Yeah. And it just sucks because, like, that honestly makes me think, like, all those girls who were, like, at least he tried, like, what are you excusing your man of? Yeah. Like, can you really think about that? Like, like that means her man doesn't really clean. That Not just that, but it just shows in general, like, what are you excusing your man of, right? Like, at least, at least he tried when it comes to something so simple like cleaning <laughs> is not okay at all. That That's not an answer that you do. It's... It's just not something you say. And I feel like th- that you kind of set the boundaries in your relationship and kind of like how things are going to be. 
And that's just not, I don't know. I think like, it, it just comes down to what you allow. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if that's what they're saying for cleaning, I can't even imagine what they're saying for, like they probably applaud them for, applaud them for not looking at another girl when they walk by. Like little things like that. It's like, oh. didn't look. like thank you for not looking. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so odd. So you would say there's not really like, there's not really uh, like notes for a bare minimum for a girl, but there's like, you pick up, uh, you pick up different roles. Yeah. Like if, um, I think with what we're talking about the cleaning right now, it's like if I would have, I don't know, what would be like a, a something for a girl that you would want me to do and I don't do it right. But I, out I mean, of laziness, because that was, that putting a matcha oh, stick on a candle was oh, like, okay, are okay. you fucking kidding me? Um, so personally, like taking your food down or like taking stuff down to the, to the kitchen. Okay, yeah, fair enough, right? So you told me, like, you know, a day before, two days before, like, hey, make sure you take your food down, right? And then the next day, I only take one plate, or I take it and I put it halfway. It's not at least you tried to bring it down. No, Mm -hmm. it's like I told, like, just do what you have to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, and if you were to tell me, like, oh, you know, it's fine. At least you took it halfway. What standard (laughs) are you? Now now you taught me. Yeah, it's like... Uh, he's satisfied with her with me taking it that way. He'll applaud me every time I do it yeah, th- just to that extent. You taught me I don't have to fully do it. You just uh-huh. taught me. You literally just trained me to not <laughs> do what you told me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, you just, it's so weird to me. But yeah, I don't think that there's really roles. I think that it just comes down to like, if you did something that day, I'm going to do the other thing so that we're both mu- mutually done. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know? That's a good take back, on that. Can we t- go back to the and talk? That shit's <laughs> so fun to me. I hate this, like, relationship talk. I just thought that was funny when all those people were, like, saying that. I'm like, I really hope that the man that you have at home is, is doing like, better. Is doing, is doing good. Because I'm, I'm worried for you. But G-Wagon talk. Back to that. What do you want to talk about G-Wagons? It just makes they're me just, so motivated. They're big. They're loud. Don't talk and shit. And expensive. Don't talk shit. Yes, I would have a G-Wagon if there I could. There you go. Thank okay. you. Hater vibes. That's <laughs> not easy to get a G-Wagon. Fuck no, it's not easy. Like you either know? you grinded for it or your parents grinded somebody for it or grinded. someone, but somebody did, somebody did grind for that G wagon. Somebody did the work. And at the end of the day, you know, you have the G wagon, which genius. I would love for my parents to have given me a G wagon. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> That's you know? crazy. I'll never hate on a rich kid. I love rich kids. They're my favorite kind of kids, actually. Mine too. They're my favorite kids. Uh-huh. I follow so many rich kids on TikTok. Do Always they commenting on their shit. Do any of them follow you back? Yeah, one of them. <laughs> She's great. I love her. <laughs> I love her because it's just like motivate like seeing their lifestyle motivate dude yeah like i have i think i think i only have one rich friend that i could say like they're rich like money wise and man that lifestyle is great it looks great from like my perspective oh but, yeah and like people always be like they're so out of touch i don't give a fuck i'm gonna <laughs> follow them because you inspire me so much to have what you have like even if you didn't work for it yep oh it's so inspiring I'm like i want your life you know so I, I don't care if they're out of touch. I want to see them so they can inspire me every day. <laughs> Make me get out of touch with you. Yeah, I want to be out of touch with you too. Like, <laughs> it's just, and I think a lot of people just like, if you're out of touch, you're just on a different level. You're just not on my touch. You're <laughs> on a different touch. I would be at your touch. I don't want to be on my touch. They're in a different bracket. I'm trying to be on their bracket. What's your, what's your dream, your dream, ultimate, ultimate dream lifestyle? Like you grinded all your life. And if you don't have this, then you're like, damn, I could have granted a little more. Kardashians without the fame. But who has that lifestyle? So many people, dude. Really? There's more rich people offline than people, than rich people online. Dude, the people who are online aren't even rich compared to the people that are offline. Mm, because that's probably true. if I had money like that, I would leave the internet so fast. So fast. Having money and being public is like. That's bad. That's it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad like i don't understand i mean i guess the kardashians aren't really that public anymore no they still do their show right i think they had a new a new episode i mean a new series right i wonder why i mean maybe they just want more money but yeah i would leave the internet so fast if i had like money money like but money money like kardashian money yeah or like jenner money both of them combined like all of them combined damn dude there's people that are so wealthy out there and it's so crazy but I'm just trying to be like, it's that. inspiring. It's, it's, it's incredible and inspiring. Oh my gosh. It really is. Like I'll never be on here. Like, like a private jet from here to like in two hour, two Genius. hour drive away. Bro, that's a 10 minute, 15 minute flight. Genius. <laughs> it's just so awesome. Like it really is inspiring. Like seeing those lifestyles is really inspiring. And like, I, I you know I'm talking shit about like the whole, like I hate it cause I'm not rich. No, but it really is really inspiring. It's like, 
seeing these people, it doesn't make me. How do I explain it? I feel like a lot of. Actually, I'm not even going to go there because I already know people are going to get upset. <laughs> Do it. Come on. No, you know how people get upset when you, um, when others have money in like the weird way and like a weird, mm. you can't even talk about it because then like, yeah. Anyway, I would love to have a lifestyle where I have a private jet, I have a G-Wagon, security, big ass house, and not on the internet. Really? Yeah. I would, I literally would love to just have that like. Not having to work, not having to be like, if I don't get up and do this, so I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills. So kind of like a, a Roman Atwood situation, like how they're offline. He has his own helicopter. They have their G wagon. I don't know how much money they have, but I mean, they they had like quite a few million videos every. I mean, uh, yeah, me million view videos every video, and they did daily vlogs. Yeah, I wonder how much the mon- money that equals to because they also had a lot of sponsors and sponsors. They're brother loaded. You think so? And they also live in Ohio. And so it was like, prime YouTube, Nat. Prime yeah, they YouTube. they are loaded. They I wonder like, what they did with that money. I would love to be in a conversation with them. That would be so cool. Because Imagine like, us on the podcast with what them. What did they, like, where did they put their money? Like, I just want to know, like, where did you put your money so I could put my money there too? So that it, like, quadruples. And I, they also didn't live in California where That's a huge they thing, take yeah. half their money. That's a huge, I'm telling you, they lived in Ohio. What is there in Ohio? I really want to go to Ohio, by the way. I, I was on live earlier and someone said like in Ohio, there's, I would tell you to come to Ohio, but there's nothing here. So I hear that a lot. Yeah. But I would love to go to Ohio. Let's do it. Let's go to Ohio. I think it's flats in Ohio, right? I think so. Flats and snow. You know what flats are? No mountains. No, I think there's snow in Ohio. Babe, do you know what flats I are? swear. Do you play Minecraft or what? I swear there's snow in Ohio. Babe, flats doesn't mean that there's no snow, bro. Oh, okay, okay. All right, what flats are flats? Is, you've never played Minecraft before? I've never played Minecraft. The jungle biome, the flats biome, the She sand. was a nerd. She was the Dude, biggest you know nerd. you know things I learned from Minecraft? How much? So much. Like, who would have fucking All right, Minecraft didn't teach you geography, though. Minecraft taught me how to use coordinates. <laughs> what you laughing at, man? Do you know how to use coordinates? Bro, who do you no, think you we don't. are? Christopher Columbus? You oh, we're going to go this way Dude, this it's crazy way. I didn't know the way <laughs> coordinates worked, right? Did you know? I didn't know. Yes. How do they work? Yeah, okay, so coordinates pretty much work according to the equator. There's an equator, and that's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not for What's sure. What's an equator? But the equator is in Africa, and it's like the, the the bottom part. I don't know, it's, uh all I know is the equator is in Africa. And it's like the middle part of the line, I guess, that they, they okay. established a long ass time ago. Okay, all right? so how do coordinates work? So from there, they have numbers that are going away from that to coordinate like different coordinates okay could be right i just really don't know what i'm talking about for me what coordinates look like it's a big t okay down here is all negatives and then it goes negative positive over here sorry negative positive over here negative positive positive negative over here whatever there's like a t right and then you you go depending on where your coordinates are that's where it tells you where to go in in that but I bet you, you didn't know that because you didn't play Minecraft. Nah, I wasn't a nerd. I actually was outside picking up poop and mowing lawns. Me too. No, you were. Me too. No, as you. As soon as I heard my dad's car back up into that driveway, I turned that computer off so fast and ran outside. <laughs> so fast before I got it taken away. So don't play. Uh, but no, I that taught me. Minecraft taught me so many real life things that it's like, it's just crazy. Like little things like, you know, you got to use the shovel for the sand, for the um, dirt and for the sand, right? Isn't it crazy? Or like the pickaxe for, you know, the axe for the wood and just these little skills that seem like just the game, but they teach you so much. I mean, yeah, it teaches you common knowledge. You're going to always, you're not going to use a shovel for a tree. Who's going to use a shovel for a tree? Who? A little kid who doesn't know. I don't know. I was playing Minecraft when I was like, what's a little kid doing with a shovel and hitting a tree? Okay. Did you know that you have to melt the iron ore to get the iron nuggets? My boy's speaking gibberish now. (laughs) Exactly. See, that's a real life thing. They actually do melt that stuff. See what I mean? I learned a lot from Minecraft. If you played Minecraft. You didn't know that they melted it? What do they melt it with? With coal. You can't melt it with coal. Or I mean, I guess to heat it up. You don't know because you didn't play Minecraft. But you would know. (laughs) What are are some little core, core memories you have when you're younger? So for me, I remember like if my dad, it's a Friday. We do the, we do the lawn and stuff on the Saturday. And if my dad told me the night the night before, like, make sure you get up bright and early and do the lawn or cut the grass and stuff. And if I slept in the next day and I hear the lawnmower on and my brothers are next to me asleep, we're in you trouble. You better put three pairs of shorts on. Dude. 
<laughs> nah, not even so three real. pairs of shorts. It wouldn't work. So real. My dad had the oldest belt in the book, and he, he used it on my, like, bro, my, my older siblings that were, like, nine years older than me know the belt that he used on us. Like, it was their belt, too. It was brand new when they got it. Every time I got hit, except for once, Joel, I'll never forget you. Forget this. <laughs> bro, my boy hit me with a stick, and I, I we started fighting, and I, I got hit for it. That's self-defense. <laughs> I got hit for hitting them back after he grabbed a stick and hit me in the back. I didn't even, and I didn't yeah, even have a shirt get, on. We would get hit for um, fighting too. But aside from yeah, that, all the hits were justified. Like all the spanks were justified. I agree, but I feel like there's just other other ways. Like some of the, I feel like some of the things that I got hit for, I I didn't need to be hit for. Nah, but nowadays like, we could have talked about that. Nowadays you know I, mean? I see like kids like instead of getting uh, getting disciplined like that, they're getting their tablets taken away, and then they throw a fit the entire time. Like. I What's think, that going to do? I, yeah, I think that, like, it's all very, very odd. And I think if they would have took my uh, iPad when I was younger, like, that shit would hurt my feelings. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'd rather take a beating than get my iPad taken away. But there's just other ways, you know? I feel like getting hit it just made me create some resentment towards my parents. Really? Not me. I got resentment. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of, because a lot of the times were really not justified. Like, you didn't have to hit me for that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think, okay, yeah. So I think, I think sometimes... Parents take it out of control and they get out their they anger. Get angry. Yeah. yeah, they get out their anger by hitting someone, and I think that's where it's that's where it's abuse. a problem. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like parents release their anger by hitting their mm -hmm. kids. Like I, I like just their day, myself, their day is shitty, and it piles up and piles up, and then you do something wrong, and they take it all that energy out on you. Mm -hmm. I feel that's the difference. That that's where it's like not okay. And there's a again, it's being hit in different ways, like. You know, when someone's like, hey, don't touch that. And they'll just like, that's different. But when it's like a real beating and you're in your room shivering because you know they're going to come in there and give you a beating. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. I just don't think that's necessary because it's like you're putting in all this terror. Like I, if I could go back, sorry, thinking back, they didn't need to do that. Yeah, but I feel like it's also hard on first time parent parenting. Oh, one hundred percent. I don't blame my parents at all, dude. You don't know how to be a parent. I don't know how to be a parent. You know, I don't know what's. All I know is that I just want to make sure not to ever let my anger out on my. Yeah, kids. me too. Me That's too. That's huge for me. Like I never. You learn, and right? it's important to understand that as well. I feel like going into parenting, understanding the rules of parenting, and like what just you learn from from your parents as well. Yeah, just whatever happened to like. Us when we were younger, like, and that we thought were wasn't okay, like that's what we're gonna apply. And my our kids are gonna apply what they didn't like from us to their kids. And I, that if people, you know, you learn as generations go on. Yeah, and I may have forgotten all the beatings that I got. Like, I honestly, honestly could probably remember like five to ten times the amount of times like I got I, hurt I don't forget or beat up. Dude, I got beat so much. Really? Fuck! It was just like unjustified, and I think that's why. Like for me, it's like I, there was no need for that shit. You know, mm -hmm. most of the times were unjustified. Yeah, I get you though. Because what was I doing? You are just being a girl. I was literally just being a girl. Like, there was no reason, you know? I get me and Edith fighting because we'd fight a lot. But, like, still, you didn't need to beat us. I don't think get I, the beating if I have a daughter. If I have a daughter, I'm not going to hit her. It's just, you That's, can use your words. I, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I'll give you the belt. I'll be like, and I give you the belt to hit her, but I wouldn't hit her. No, and you again, you can use your words. But and then yeah, but if I raise a son, I don't want to raise a, I don't want to raise a dumb son. I want to raise, like, a proper son that has manners. Well, I think that's everyone's goal. Mm -hmm. I think doing it is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Babe, can you move my car forward? Pause camera. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Let's just wrap this up and then we're good. Okay, ready? Anyway, we are going to wrap up the podcast. We had enough G-Wagon talk, enough kid talk. Enough, enough, yeah, enough discipline talk. <laughs> enough discipline talk. That's you guys are going to watch us be parents, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. New era in our life. But not anytime soon, but you know what else is soon? <laughs> A new episode. So stay tuned for next week's yeah. episode. And we'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye.